This character blows. Chibi Robo. Why is Nintendo just out to make this game fail? I really don't get it. Like, look at him. What did this little guy do to deserve that? Released back in 2005, Chibi Robo Plug-In Adventure was developed by Skips. It certainly sold humbly, to say the least. You play as the titular Chibi Robo on his adventure to fix a dysfunctional family. There's so many things you can do. Talk to a daughter who only speaks like a frog. Meet aliens and little egg guys. Deal with crippling debt. Playing dress up. Driving cars. Fixing a crumbling marriage. And experiencing a love story between a mummy and a princess. Wow. Saying this game is a little weird is... It's a pretty big understatement, honestly. But I live for that kind of weirdness. In order to help this family, Chibi Robo must take on the grueling tasks of by cleaning, sweeping, cooking, providing therapy, and killing spiders. Chibi Robo really leaves you with one of the most unique gameplay experiences out there. Ah! What's that? Oh yeah, and Nintendo really hates this guy for some reason. I don't know why. It's got a lot of character and a lot of style, but for some reason, Nintendo always finds a way to torture its fans. Gentlemen, how do we make this little guy sell more units? You there, what do you think? How about we put it on the DS? Not a bad idea, but we can do better. How about you? What are you thinking? I know. Let's make it a Walmart exclusive. You're promoted. Yep. Absolutely no idea how that could possibly go wrong. They left us high and dry for the next six years by only releasing the next game in Japan. Which really sucks, because it was a sequel to the GameCube game, being the story of Jenny after she's all grown up. The next game to come out and be released in the US was in 2013 with a crappy 3DS gimmick game. That, I mean, wasn't the worst thing, but meh. Now, now, these are all great ideas and all, but how do we really twist the knife into Chibi Robo fans? You. What if we make it a platform game? We're bankrupt now. <laughs> well, that was enough depression for one day. Let's get to the game. <laughs> Sweet beans, I wasn't ready. Well, my heart can only take so much. Let's talk about something happy. Happy points. Your main currencies in this game are going to be moolah and happy points. You go around the Sanderson's residence and do your very best to fix this home. Along the way, when you do good things, you get happy points, as well as moolah. And not only do you help them, but you also help the toys. The cast is wonderfully unique, and each and every member has stayed in my brain since I was a kid. Just look at them. I would literally spend hours just wandering around this house. You really do feel like a tiny, tiny speck of a robot in this massive house. Which is honestly something I'd like to see a lot more games do. Platforming itself is a puzzle, which is something really unique for this game. If you see an object in a high place, well the challenge isn't going to be getting up there necessarily, but it's more so how am I going to get up there. Again, it's just another point in this being one of the most unique games that I've gotten to play. The progression system in the game actually comes really naturally. You just wander around the house, do good things, and the story usually comes with it. I never really needed a guide up until the very end of the game. And that's most likely my fault, since I'm, I'm a little dumb, you know, if you couldn't tell. Seriously, it all flows pretty naturally. Finding key items to help with progression is always fun, and it's actually pretty cute too. Like, you can use a coffee mug to protect yourself. That's such an ingenious idea or that you can use a toothbrush to clean up stuff. And also stumbling across puzzles is super rewarding feeling actually. To reiterate, you could literally spend like hours in this game just wandering around and it doesn't feel like wasted time. Absolutely one of my favorite things about this game was its sense of humor. It's really off the wall and it's certainly a, it's a, it's a little Japanese to say the least. Even after all these years, the humor stands up on its own. It never fails to either make me grin or just burst out laughing. Now all this praise is cool and all, but let's take a note from Nintendo and demolish this game. I'm just gonna give a friendly reminder that this is an old Japanese game from 2005. That aspect of it really shows at times. Personally, graphics don't really bother me all that much, but they bother some people, and this game can really be rough around the edges. 
The characters speak using sounds, kind of like Banjo-Kazooie, which I personally think is really charming, but some of the characters with the uh, scratchier voices, that could really get on some people's nerves. But I just see it as part of the game's charm. Oh, and there's also tons of backtracking if you're not familiar with this game. A lot of items needed for progression can be really easily skipped over. And when you need it, then oh, well, I guess I gotta backtrack all the way to the start. Oh, and there's also a lot of backtracking, especially if you're not familiar with the game. On a second partial playthrough I did, I was able to get the stuff a lot more efficiently and a lot faster, but my first time playing through it, I was really inefficient and I had to keep going back and forth to a lot of areas. Some people love that kind of stuff, some people hate it. However, in the case of Chibi Robo, I thought it was a bit much at times. The biggest reason for that is because your speed is really limited. You have two speeds, walking with your tail on the floor, and walking when you pick it up. The increase, it's noticeable, but it's really not a lot. Your goals also tend to be pretty obscure. Most of the time, the game would give you really good hints here and there to guide you in the right direction. Other times, the game would make you pay attention to figure out where to go next. And about 10% of the time, I just felt completely lost and, admittedly, I resorted to using a guide. Of course, it didn't help that I took a several month long break in between, but I took a break because I got stuck. I won't get into spoilers, but in the last steps before you beat the game, there's a pretty convoluted sequence of events that you gotta do to beat the game. The game has a lot to uncover, and it's honestly one of the most original stories that I've ever seen. While I was too dumb to beat it as a kid, coming back to this year has been a lot of fun. It took me around 16 hours to beat this game, only doing some of the side quests. While the gameplay can definitely become tedious at times, I never found it to be too much of a bother. You get a good rhythm going as you walk through the house, finish tasks, progress the story, recharge, rinse and repeat until the day or night ends. And there are so many nice touches that this game has that really supports it. I love that everything is tied to music in some way. Whether it's doing an action like brushing and the guitar plays, or even Chibi Robo's footsteps, and depending on the surface it's on, the instrument changes. And even the design of the house, for the most part, really feels immersive like an actual house. Every landmark is distinct, and I never really get lost. Also, the soundtrack's a bop, so can't go wrong with that. I absolutely gotta say, I love this game to death. And like I said before, I grew up playing it. And man, was that, let me tell you, that was a lucky call. Like I said before, it sold pretty abysmally, and while I can't personally recommend emulation, if you want to get your hands on a legit copy of this game, ooh, get ready to hand over some moolah, let me tell you that. It's a real shame that this game is so niche. Chibi Robo was a victim of bad circumstance and bad decision making. Honestly, it deserved way better than what it got, and I'd say go give this game a shot. I can guarantee it'll be worth your time. Hey, thank you for making it to the end of my video. If you like what you see, consider subscribing, and if you want to stay updated, hit the bell to get notifications. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day!